Now that we understand the precise meaning of a function being continuous at a point, we can prove some basic and familiar properties of continuous functions that thankfully work out as we would expect. Link in the description to my lesson introducing the definition of continuity. What we'll be proving today are these basic continuity laws. So assuming that f and g are continuous at some point c in their domain a, we know that k times f of x is continuous at c for any real number k. We know that f of x plus g of x is continuous at c. The product of the functions is continuous at c, and the quotient of the functions is continuous at c, given that the denominator is non-zero on the entire domain. When we introduced continuity, we talked about these four characterizations of the definition. You could use the classic epsilon delta definition to prove our results today. That could be good practice, but it's going to be really easy for us to just use the limit definition of continuity. We already proved all of these properties regarding functional limits. So if we use the limit definition, this is going to be a breeze. And it's also no problem for us to assume that C is a limit point of the domain. This definition doesn't make any sense unless C is a limit point. If C is not a limit point of the domain, then all of these functions are continuous at C trivially. Link in the description to the lesson where we go over that fact. We're just going to assume that C is a limit point of the domain. That will allow us to use the limit definition of continuity, and then we'll be able to prove all of these properties very easily because we've proven the analogous properties for limits. And I'll leave a link in the description to the lesson where we prove those. Let's begin with the constant multiple law. If our function function f of x is continuous at c, then k times f of x is also continuous at c for any real number k. This is because the limit of f of x as x approaches c we know is f of c because f is assumed to be continuous at c. But then, by our limit laws, we know that the limit of k times f of x as x approaches c equals k times f of c. This is just a property of functional limits we've previously proven. This, though, by definition of continuity, implies that k f of x is continuous at c, because the limit of k f of x as x approaches c is k f of c. Next, the sum law. If f and g are both continuous at c, then the sum f of x plus g of x must be continuous at c. This is because the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches c by our limit laws we know is the sum of their individual limits. The limit of f of x as x approaches c plus the limit of g of x as x approaches c. But since f and g are both continuous at c, we know that these limits must equal the function's values at c. The limit of f of x is f of c. The limit of g of x is g of c. Thus, the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches c is f of c plus g of c. Therefore, by the limit definition of continuity, f of x plus g of x is continuous at c. The sum of continuous functions is continuous. Next, the product law. The product of continuous functions will be continuous. This is because the limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches c by our limit laws is equal to the product of the limits, the limit of f of x times the limit of g of x. Both of these limits by the function's continuity, f of x is continuous, so its limit is f of c, g of x is continuous, so its limit is g of c, so we've shown that the limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches c is f of c times g of c by definition. That means f of x g of x is continuous at c. Finally, the division law. If f and g are both continuous at c, then f of x divided by g of x is continuous at c, provided that g of x is not equal to zero for all x in the domain. Now, in theory, g of x doesn't really need to be non-zero on the whole domain. It just needs to be non-zero in some space around C so that we can let X approach C without there being any issues with this division by G of X. Whatever that space is around C, 
where g of x is non-zero, we can kind of just imagine that smaller space being the domain that we're actually looking in. Regardless, the proof follows in a similar manner. The limit of f of x divided by g of x as x approaches c by our limit laws is just the quotient of the individual limits. The limit of f of x as x approaches c, which by the continuity of f at c, we know is f of c. This is divided by the limit of g of x as x approaches c, which by the continuity of g at c, we know is g of c. Thus, the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches c is f of c divided by g of c. And so by definition, f of x over g of x is continuous at c. So we've proven if f and g are both functions continuous at a point c, then any multiple of f of x is continuous at c, the sum f plus g is continuous at c, the product f times g is continuous at c, and the quotient f divided by g is continuous at c, as long as we don't have any problems with division by zero. So we can do basic arithmetic with continuous functions and get continuous functions. This actually means that every polynomial is continuous, since we previously proved in my video introducing continuity that the identity function f of x equals x is continuous. So by applying these properties repeatedly to this function, we can make all the polynomials we want, as well as the rational functions. We'll look at that result a little bit more in depth next time that every polynomial is continuous, but hopefully Hopefully you can see how we can get there with these laws. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these real analysis videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description, it's a huge help. Thanks for watching. Just to be